Ya no es el momento de los odios Este gobierno que va a iniciar el 7 de agosto Es un gobierno de la vida Es el gobierno que quiere construir a Colombia Como una potencia mundial de la vida Y si queremos Sintetizar quizás en tres frases En qué consiste un gobierno de la vida Yo diría Primero En la paz Segundo En la justicia social Tercero En la justicia ambiental Yesterday, June 19th, Colombians made history when the historic pack ticket of Gustavo Petro and Francia Marquez won in the second round of presidential elections with 50.4% of the votes versus the uh, vote tally of Rodolfo Hernandez and Marilene Castillo of the Governor's Anti-Corruption League, which clinched 47% in these second round presidential elections. This means that the progressive ticket of Gustavo Pedro and Francia Marquez will be the next president and vice president of the country. This is, as many have stated, a historic victory for the country. Um, the fact that a progressive ticket that is led by a former member of the, of the M19 guerrilla movement, who has been a very progressive and outspoken member of the legislative body. He was also the mayor of Bogota who has pushed forward extremely progressive and socially forward policies such as expanding healthcare, expanding education. He's accompanied, of course, by Francia Marquez, who is a staunch defender of the land rights of the Afro-descendant and indigenous people in Colombia. She's an environmentalist, has been deeply involved in social movements in the country. The same movements which face persecution and assassination attempts and assassinations from the far right wing sectors of the uh, Colombian society who have held on to power for so many decades and years. Gracias, mi gente colombiana. Gracias, Colombia, por este momento histórico. Quiero agradecer a todos los colombianos y colombianas que dieron la vida por este momento. Todos nuestros hermanos y hermanas, líderes sociales que tristemente fueron asesinados en este país, a la juventud que ha sido asesinada y desaparecida, a las mujeres que han sido violentadas y desaparecidas, A todos ellos que sé que desde algún lugar nos están acompañando en este momento histórico para Colombia, les damos las gracias. Gracias por haber hecho el camino. Gracias por haber sembrado la semilla de la resistencia y de la esperanza. The fact that this duo, a, uh left politician, a social movement leader, were able to win these elections is truly, truly historic. Their platform speaks for itself. It's about uh, expanding land reform in the country. It's about granting access to education and other fundamental rights like housing, uh, like healthcare, which in Colombia are out of reach for so many millions of Colombians. It's about addressing the demands that came up during the national strike last year in April 2021 that uh, continued to June 2021, this 10 week long national strike, which saw thousands and thousands of people on the streets denouncing the, the conservative policies of Ivan Duque, but not only of Ivan Duque, of really the, the right wing establishment in Colombia that has held on to power for so long. The people last year said enough and they have continued building and they've been continued 
pushing this momentum and this energy into this campaign. It is not just a campaign of Gustavo Petro, it's not just a campaign of Francia Marquez, but really of all the movements in Colombia that have been on the streets over the past several decades, that have been pushing for change, that have been pushing for peace, and have been demanding structural reforms in the country that has been so dominated by the right wing and so subservient to the interests of the US government. Um, this is going to have a huge impact on the region of Latin America and the Caribbean as well. Uh, Gustavo Petro in his campaign platform said that he wanted to reestablish and normalize relations with the neighboring country of Venezuela. Uh, Colombia has long served as the launching pad for many of the US's attacks against Venezuela. Um, different paramilitary groups have trained in Colombia and then gone on to launch assassination attempts and other such crimes against the, the Bolivarian revolution and government. Um, this is enormously important. Colombia has also been a really key regional ally in, in just generally maintaining the U.S. grip over the region. It's home to many important military bases, uh, which are used by the U.S. to carry out uh, surveillance and other operations across the continent. Um, and so we're looking at a Latin America that is no longer dominated by conservative governments that have a preference to the United States, but it's a region that now is full of progressive leaders. And this varies from uh, socialist Cuba, socialist Venezuela, to progressive Chile, uh, progressive Mexico. And you know, at the end of the day, this shift towards policies that are going to reject neoliberalism, that are going to favor the people, that are going to reject putting the interests of foreign nations, of first world nations, of imperialist nations above the interests of the home nation um, really signifies a shift and it's a waking up of the consciousness of the people. Somos parte apenas de un acumulado, de una resistencia que ya tiene cinco siglos, diría Francia, que somos la sumatoria de las resistencias de Colombia que hemos congregado no solo ese pasado de luchas, de resistencias, de rebeldías indudablemente, de rebeldías contra la injusticia, de rebeldías contra un mundo que no debería ser, de rebeldías contra la discriminación, de rebeldías contra la desigualdad, ¿Cuánta gente que aquí no nos acompaña hoy? ¿Cuánta gente que desapareció por los caminos de Colombia y no se encuentran decenas de miles? ¿Cuánta gente que murió? ¿Cuánta gente que está presa hoy en estos momentos? ¿Cuántos jóvenes encadenados? esposados, tratados como bandoleros, simplemente porque tenían esperanza, simplemente porque tenían amor. Um, the Colombian people have been on the streets mobilizing, engaged in popular struggle, engaged in pushing forward uh, legislative reforms, engaged in making sure that the victims of this country, in this country, which there are too, too many of tens of thousands of victims from the armed conflict, uh, victims of what they call state terrorism, all of these have been engaged in demanding this change as well. And I think it's really telling when we see that during um, the victory speech of Gustavo Petro and Francia Marquez, uh, the mother of Dylan Cruz, who was killed by police in November 2019 during the national strike, a different national strike, she was on stage and she said that this is a new chapter in Colombian history. It's a new chapter for the victims to be able to get justice and for uh, Colombia to have a new future. And I think this is so important to keep in mind that it's not just about this year, it's about so many years and so many decades of injustice um, right now, Colombia is also in the middle of the special peace jurisdiction, which has seen um, many different cases of army generals, of people involved in the Colombian armed forces facing trial for crimes that they committed during the armed conflict. One of the major crimes is of the false positive scandal, where civilians were dressed up as guerrilla fighters and uh, counted as people that were killed in the armed conflict. This was given 
uh, this was given a lot of attention during this uh, special peace jurisdiction. And there's more demand that people responsible for these crimes be held accountable. Um, and this is also primary on the agenda of uh, Gustavo Pedro, of Francia Marquez, is giving justice to all of these victims in Colombian society. This is a historic moment. It is a real change in the regional uh, board of the regional politics and is necessarily and definitively a change in 60 years of a Colombia that's been dominated by the right wing, been dominated by politics of death, of militarization, of persecution. And so really it is an exciting moment. We'll be following all of the updates as they come.